Thanks for joining us for Bite Size Bible Q&A. Today we're going to be looking at what I consider to be the second most impressive set of prophecies in the Bible. If somebody could accurately predict every political outcome in a particular region, for the next, I don't know, five, 10 years, we would be greatly impressed. The way things are now, we can't even predict things from the next five days how they might turn out. What you have in Daniel chapter 11, in my opinion, it is the most concentrated and potent portion of the scripture as it pertains to prophecy. If you're just looking for one little passage that is packed full of prophetical power, it's Daniel chapter 11. The chapter starts off with Daniel receiving revelation about how the kingdom of the Medes and Persians would end up. Now remember, Daniel's receiving this information in about 536 BC. So from that time moving forward, there were four more kings that stood up in that Median Persian empire. And as Daniel 11 in verse two predicted, the fourth king of the Persian empire was far richer than the three before him. In Daniel 11 and verse 3, we read, And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. This king, as history would teach us, was Alexander the Great. Now, if you know much about Alexander the Great, you know that it didn't take him long to build a vast kingdom, to spread the Grecian Empire uh, to the far stretches of the then known world. And Alexander died an untimely death about the age of 33. And at the time of his death, he didn't have a son who was capable of taking the throne. As, as I understand, he had just a little infant boy at the time. And upon his death, Alexander's kingdom was divided into four different regions. Interestingly enough, that happened in about 323 BC, a little more than 200 years before that, Daniel had this to say about it. In Daniel 11 and verse 4, When he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. Daniel had it spot on almost 210 years before it took place. Alexander's kingdom was divided into four regions. There was the Macedonian region, a region in Thrace, and then for the rest of Daniel 11, it focuses on these two regions, the king of the north and the king of the south. The king of the north, that'll be the Syrian empire, and then the kingdom of the south, that's the Egyptian empire. And we know this in the north as the Seleucids and in the south as the Ptolemies. Now, Daniel chapter 11, as you progress through it, because this is bite-sized Bible Q&A, we don't have time to go through every prophecy and how all of these fantastic details were fulfilled. I would encourage you, if you want to do your own homework on it, there's lots of websites, lots of books that, that do a fine job of explaining how all of this was fulfilled. I would recommend Clarence Larkin's commentary on the book of Daniel. I thought he did an excellent job of documenting the history behind this. I think that one of the best supports for the accuracy of all the prophetic material in this chapter comes not from a friend of the Bible, but one of its foes. You might be familiar with the name Jerome. Jerome, who translated the Bible into Latin, he wrote a commentary on the book of Daniel. And in this commentary, he mentioned this man named Porphyry. And I hope that's how you say that name. I don't think I've actually heard a proper pronunciation for that name, so forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. But now Porphyry predates Jerome by about 150 years. So when Jerome is writing his commentary on Daniel, he refers back to something that Porphyry had, had said. Porphyry stated that Daniel was not a prophet, but rather a historian. He thought that the book of Daniel was written by some unknown author claiming to be Daniel in about 120, 125 BC. So what Daniel focuses in on is from the time of Alexander's demise from about 323 BC until Antiochus Epiphanes in 165 BC. So you have about 150 years worth of detailed information about the political scenery of the Middle East. Can you imagine anybody trying to predict what's going to happen in that part of the world? Daniel did. 
Porphyry recognized that the information in Daniel 11 was accurate. And Porphyry had said that everything mentioned in Daniel 11 up until Antiochus Epiphanes, which is 165 BC, all of that was authentic history. Porphyry explained that nobody as just a natural man could possibly have known all of these things before they happened. So Porphyry's conclusion was that the information was so detailed it had to have been the work of a historian. Now, he had no real evidence to support that claim. The reason he came to that conclusion is because he had already presupposed that men cannot prophesy. Now, since the time of Porphyry, there have been plenty of things that have come to light, lots of pieces of evidence that have come into play that supports the idea that Daniel was not a historian, but rather an actual prophet that lived in the latter half of the 6th century BC. And even if you don't accept all the research that have been done by non-biased scholars on this, on this point, you can take the words of the Lord Jesus he said in Matthew 24, verse 15, that Daniel was a prophet, not a historian. So here we have it from the mouth of not a friend, but a foe, a skeptic of the Bible saying that all the details we have in Daniel 11 are accurate. And they are so impressive. Even the skeptic has to acknowledge, yes, that information is true, but it's so true, it had to have been written on the other side of those events taking place. It couldn't have been written beforehand. It's just far too impressive. So as time allows, I strongly encourage that you take a long look at Daniel 11 verses 2 up to 35. Now take special note of what it says in verse 35. It talks about the time of the end. So after verse 35, you get to reading about prophecies that have not yet been fulfilled, but the way it looks might one day very soon uh, come to pass. You start to read about the Antichrist. And then in chapter 12, you have information about the latter half of Daniel's 70th week. So if somebody comes to you and says, why should I believe the Bible is the word of God? Well, I don't know of any man in his own wisdom, his own natural ability, that can possibly predict every major political outcome of the Middle East for a period of about 160 years. That's what we have in Daniel chapter 11. Please take a long look at it. I hope you find it as impressive as I do. But before you go, make sure you click like and subscribe, and that way you can follow along with the next edition of Bite Size Bible Q&A. We're gonna talk about what I rank as number one on the prophetical information in the Bible.